La 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 la. Hi, si, chai, hold tight. If you get that reference, you're a real one. If you don't get that reference, you're still a real one for clicking on this video. Alright, so today I'm gonna talk about cable. Yeah, you know that prehistoric method of watching your favorite shows and movies that nobody has anymore? Yeah, we're gonna talk about that. So cable was very different than streaming services nowadays. Because today, if you want to watch a show, just search it up, find out what streaming service it's on. If you don't have that streaming service, pay for a subscription. If you do have that streaming service, just go to it, search up whatever show or movie you want to watch, and then watch it. And you don't have to sit through any commercials or anything. However, back in the days of cable, you couldn't really do that. If you wanted to watch a show or movie, first you had to figure out what channel it was on, and then you had to figure out what time it was going to be on, and then you had to clear your schedule just to make time for that program. And then when it comes on, you have to tune into the channel. And then like once the program starts, you can't pause it. Like if you want to go use the bathroom or somebody calls you on the phone, you had to wait for commercial breaks. Oh yeah, that's another thing. You get commercial breaks with cable and you can't skip through those. You just got to like wait it out. Now I'm beginning to see why everybody ditched cable. Cable kind of sucks in comparison to streaming services nowadays, but it does offer a sense of nostalgia for the people who grew up with it. And I is one of those people. Yes, I is. And in regards to cable, I wanted to talk about Nickelodeon specifically. So Nickelodeon had their primary channel, Nickelodeon, which would show its most popular shows like iCarly, Victorious, Drake and Josh, Soy 101, and so on. But they also had Nick at Night, which was a nightly programming block, which ran from about 8 or 9 p.m. until 6 or 6.30 in the morning. And Nick at Night would primarily show reruns of old classic sitcoms such as Full House, or The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, or The Nanny, you know, stuff like that. Nickelodeon also had another sister channel, which was called Nicktoons, which was for the animation lovers, because that's where you got, like, your favorite Nickelodeon cartoon shows, like Spongebob and The Fairly Odd Parents, both of which were also featured on Nickelodeon also, because they were just so popular. Nicktoons also gave us shows like Tough Puppy, Fanboy, and Chum Chum. I'm so embarrassed that that show exists and that I watched it. Although not as embarrassed as I am about Pickle and Peanut. That is the worst show ever made. Disney XD, why did you let that happen? Anyways, Nicktoons was for the animation lovers. And then you had Nick Jr., which was for the little, little kids, like preschoolers. And they'd show shows like Bubble Guppies, Dora the Explorer, Go Diego Go. Wow, wow, Wubsy. Oh my gosh, I love that show. But you get the idea. Nickelodeon was for the kids, Nick at Night was for the grown-ups, Nick Toons was for the animation lovers, and Nick Jr. was for the little, little kids. But what about the teenagers? Oh, don't worry. The teens, us teens, we got Teen Nick. So Teen Nick was another one of Nickelodeon's sister channels, and I feel like I am like the perfect person to talk about Teen Nick because I actually watched it. From 2013 to 2016, specifically, those were the years where I was, like, religiously watching Teen Nick. And I liked it because, like, yeah, it was reruns of iCarly and Victorious and Big Time Rush, shows that I've seen a million times and that were still on the air. But they'd also show animated shows such as Hey Arnold, Rugrats, The Wild Thornberries, old, old shows from the 90s and the 2000s that I probably wouldn't have been exposed to I mean, I'm sure I would have gone out of my way later in life to watch these shows because I'm just a big fan of like Nickelodeon and Disney. But I don't think that I would have had the same love for these shows that I have now had I not grown up watching them on Teen Nick and stuff. And most of Nickelodeon's sister channels didn't really have original programming. When it comes to Teen Nick, the only original programming that I can remember is Nick Cannon's show, Teen Nick Top 10, which was basically a music video countdown of the top 10 music videos of the week. I really liked that show. And I remember around that time, I was waiting for so long for Fifth Harmony's music video for Worth It to come out. And then it did and we loved it. But I can't remember if 
it premiered on Teenage Top 10 or not, but it was around that time, that era. What a time to be alive. But aside from the programming, one thing that really stood out to me about T Nick was its product placement. I guess the higher ups at Nickelodeon realized that their teen audience with Team Nick has something that no other demographic really had, and that would be money and easy to manipulate. And because of those, Team Nick would show so many product placements, getting teens and tweens to like buy this product, buy this product, buy this product. I remember there was a commercial for the Snackies cup, which was a cup with a smaller cup inside of it on the top. And that smaller cup acted as like a little snack tray so you could have your little snack and your little drink at the same time. There was also a commercial for X Out, which was an acne removal medication, which was from the makers of Proactive. And I even remember that they got Zendaya and Tinashe to um, be in their commercials promoting the product. Tell me why I had to get both of them. I did, I got both of them. The Snackies cup broke really easily and we had to throw that away. And the x -Out cream never worked, at least not on my skin. There was also on Teenic the commercial for the contraption that let you fill up multiple water balloons all at once. And I'm pretty sure Teenic is where I saw the Daisy Fuentes hair extension commercials. They were really throwing so many advertising products at tweens and teens on Teen Nick. Whereas on Nickelodeon and the other sister channels, they were primarily just like promoting their content. Like, don't miss the must-see iCarly event this Saturday at 8. You know, stuff like that. But yeah, Teen Nick was a riot. But I will say I am very glad to have grown up with Teen Nick and that it's a part of my upbringing in a way. The Teen Nick Top 10, all of the throwback shows. But the one contribution to my life from Teen Nick that I will remember more than anything else was its ridiculous commercials. You'll flip over hot buns. Anyways, that's it for today. Let me know if you watch Teen Nick and if you've ever bought anything from those ridiculous commercials. All right, bye.